Joining us here at Post 9, Ben Walter, CEO of Chase for Business. Ben, good to see you. Good to have you here. So what are you seeing from, from small business as far as their holiday expectations? I would say we're seeing tempered optimism. You know, if you talk to most small business owners, about two-thirds of them say their businesses are thriving, they're doing well. Now, there's always a bit of a skew there. You know, pessimists don't start businesses, and they don't do very well if they do. So they tend to be an optimistic group. And we see a divergence between how they feel about their own business and how they feel about the economy. So two-thirds say, hey, I'm doing great. About 40% say, say the economy is doing great. And that gap is as wide as we've ever seen it. Why is that? I think it's because the economy is slowing down. So, you know, that, which, by the way, I always remind people, that's what the Fed intended to do, yeah. right? It was overheating, so they want things to slow down. They do still expect growth. So about half of business owners still expect higher sales than they had last year. Another 40% think they'll be flat. So few people expect to be down, but those are lower numbers than we saw last year. For small business, access to credit is always very key and has been tighter since the Fed has been raising rates. What does that look like right now? It's going to continue to be on the tighter side, partly just because of price, right? Interest rates are up, and they are interest rate sensitive, small businesses. If you look at their cash flows, margins are under pressure, so their ability to pay is constrained to some degree. And we've also seen pressure in some of the local and regional banks, which still do about two-thirds of the lending to small businesses overall in aggregate. That's particularly concentrated in certain sectors, especially real estate investment. You look at NFIB, uh, the percentage who say good time to expand. What do you think it takes to get that number higher? Is it moving past an election cycle or getting rates down to a certain level? I think it's getting inflation under control. So if you look at most small businesses, still a third of them say inflation is my number one problem, and they're running up against their ability to put prices through. We know consumers are feeling more squeezed than they were a year ago. Small businesses struggle to put prices through as aggressively as larger businesses. So getting inflation and getting their cost structure under control is going to be the number one thing they can do to lean in and grow. It's going to be hard to envision a rollback in wages, though, right? No, it is going to, see, it's going to be hard to see a rollback. That said, we've seen hiring drop way down on the list of concerns. So last year it was sort of 40, 45 percent said I couldn't hire enough people. That's dropped all the way down to 15 percent for small businesses. So that tells me that labor markets are softening and they are able to increasingly find the people they need. But are they in hiring mode is the question. Yes, yeah, still about 40 percent expect to hire over the next year. It's not as many as last year. And I think that's because of the margin squeeze. And people are feeling like, hey, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to invest too much more for the time being, but I'm going to let this ride. We also survey our retailers, so specifically retailers heading into the fourth quarter. And only about 40 percent of them are building inventory. So the, the ones who are expect to sell more. The ones who aren't are saying, you know, I'm just going to sell what I've got. Are you surprised we haven't seen more carnage in, in small business as a result of 525 basis points of tightening in a historically short period? I'm not because their cash buffers were so strong heading into this. So if you look at the extraordinary amount of stimulus that came from the government in the form of PPP and IDLE and other programs, uh, we saw businesses enter this tightening cycle with more cash on hand than they'd ever had. So that has been coming down. They have been spending it down, but they had a cushion. If they hadn't had that cushion, it would have been tough. So you're not seeing any type of recessionary worries? Oh, not, not, nothing acute. I mean, it, it's always a balancing act for the Fed, right? Slow it down just enough, not too much. So far, that seems to be going well. Uh, but things are getting tighter, and we're going to have to see what happens going into the spring and whether the Fed eases off or not. Geographically, is, is the South and Southeast still the hottest part of the U.S. economy? It is, but it's pretty broad-based. We don't see a whole lot of difference by geography, surprisingly. We expected to see the South stronger, especially with all the population migration and boom. And we see some skew, but not as much as you'd expect. Hmm. How about business creation versus, say, business uh, bankruptcy delinquency? We get, it seems like we get fresh figures on that every couple days. And we're still at record territory. So if you look at where business formations are, they're still 50% above where they were pre-pandemic. And, you know, we've been trying to sort of peel that back and figure out why. People, we always see a little bit of spike when economies weaken, when the economy weakens. People, people start out on their own. People start out on their own. They do that. But this has been pretty much straight through since COVID. We have seen elevated levels of business That's formation. That's going to be great for you in terms of client count. Yeah. It is. Our business has grown substantially in the last few years.